Hey there, it's William. Today we're gonna to show you how to fix a Speed Queen dryer that doesn't heat. This might happen due to a faulty thermal fuse, a defective heating element, or a malfunctioning thermostat. Let's work to find out what's going wrong so we can fix this problem step by step. Before we get started, hit those like and subscribe buttons if you wanna join our repair community and get notified each time we post a new video guide. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. First, we need to get our tools together. Today, we'll need a 1 quarter inch nut driver, a 5 16 inch nut driver, two adjustable wrenches, and a multimeter. Also, please remember to keep safety first. Always disconnect your dryer by unplugging it or switching the breaker off, unless you're testing for live voltage. Now, let's get started. We're going to remove the terminal block cover and test for AC volts which has a symbol that looks like a V with a squiggly line in the multimeter. Since we're dealing with live voltage here, extreme care should always be taken to protect against electrical shock, which could potentially result in serious injury. Please do not test live voltage if you're uncomfortable using a multimeter. Now you can plug the dryer back in. We're gonna use our meter probes to test from the red wire to the black wire. If you get 240 volts AC here, you can unplug the power cord and check the timer. To access the timer, we're taking our 1 quarter inch nut driver and removing the screws that hold the console to the top panel. While we're at it, let's go ahead and make sure the timer is moved to a time dry cycle. Once that's done, we're going to rotate the console forward. From here, we're removing the wire from the terminal labeled H. Now we're setting our meter to continuity, which looks like a sideways Wi-Fi symbol, and testing from terminal L2 to terminal H. If there's no continuity, then the timer has failed and needs to be replaced. If there is continuity, you can plug the wire from terminal H back in and continue troubleshooting. We're going to move to the fabric selector switch now, and we need to make sure that it's set to normal heat. Now we're going to remove the wire at terminal two and test it for continuity to terminal L1. If there's not continuity, then the fabric selector switch would need to be replaced. If there is continuity, We'll need to continue troubleshooting, so we need to put the wire back on and secure the console back in place before moving on. Now we're going into the dryer. This specific unit is missing the front panel, but once the two screws in front are removed, the panel would rotate forward and then down. The upper panel of the front of the dryer has two screws, one on each bottom corner. We're going to remove these screws with our 5 16 inch nut driver. Then we're rotating the bottom out to about 45 degrees and then moving it down. To help with putting this back together later on, it's a good idea to snap a picture of the door switch wiring so you have a reference point. Once you've done that, we can disconnect the wires for the door switch and set the panel to the side. With it off, you should see two wires for the light, as well as a clip holding the wiring harness that needs to be removed. Then remove the four screws holding the front bulkhead to the frame. We're lifting up the bulkhead slightly just so that it clears any tabs, then moving it down and out. Then we can just set it to the side. This gives us access to the cycling thermostat. We are removing the two outside wires and using the multimeter to test the terminals for continuity. If there's not continuity, then the cycling thermostat would need to be replaced. If there is continuity, put the wires back in place so we can keep troubleshooting. Now we're reaching back and removing the belt from the motor. Once the belt is removed, we can lift up the belt and use it to help pull the drum out. Then we can set them to the side. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to test the high limit thermostat, which you can find on the left on the heating element. We're going to remove one wire and use the multimeter to test it for continuity. If there's not continuity, then the high limit thermostat would need to be replaced. If there is continuity, put the wire back in place so we can continue troubleshooting. Next up is a thermal fuse, which is also located on the heating element just on the right side. We're gonna remove one wire and test this for continuity. If there's no continuity, then the thermal fuse would need to be replaced. If there is continuity, put the wire back in place and continue troubleshooting. Now we're moving to the heating element. We're setting our multimeter to measure resistance in ohms, which has a symbol that looks like an upside down horseshoe. Our multimeter doesn't have a low resistance setting, so we are gonna use continuity, which will give us the same readings. With one wire removed and with our meter probes on the element terminals, we should get a resistance reading between 8 to 10 ohms. If the resistance isn't within this range, the element will need to be replaced. And if it is within this range, we can put the wire back in place and move on to the last test, the motor. 
If you've made it this far with troubleshooting, we can safely say that the motor is the cause of failure. But there's a way we can be sure. Set the multimeter to continuity and place one probe in each of the outer terminals. When you activate the centrifugal switch, there should be continuity. If there's no continuity, like we see here, then the motor has failed. If you found out that the motor on your dryer has failed like this one did, I'm going to show you how to replace it. To remove the motor, you'll need to remove the blower wheel housing cover by taking out the 1 quarter inch screws with the 1 quarter inch nut driver. There are also two 5 16 inch screws holding the blower wheel cover to the cabinet. Now we're going to remove the blower wheel. To do this, we can grab an adjustable wrench and secure it to the motor pulley. From there, we're going to hold it while placing the other wrench on the blower wheel and rotating it counterclockwise. Now we can set the blower wheel to the side. Then we are going to disconnect the wire harness. We need to grab our 1 quarter inch nut driver and put it onto the motor mounting clips, then press down and pry away from the motor. With the clips removed, we can lift the motor up slightly and pull it away from the blower housing. Here's the old motor and here's a new one. If you've already got one, great. If not, you can pick one up at appliancepartspros.com. We're angling the new motor into the blower housing and onto the motor mount. Then we can install the motor mounting clips and wires. To put the dryer back together, we're going to put the blower wheel back on and rotate it clockwise to secure it to the motor. Then we are reinstalling the 5 16 inch screws holding the blower wheel cover to the cabinet. Now we're grabbing the blower wheel cover and securing it with the 1 quarter inch screws that we removed earlier. We're going to grab the drum and belt and install them both. Make sure the drum rests securely on the back rollers. Now we're going to grab the front bulkhead and install it. Then secure it back in place with the 1 quarter inch screws. Don't forget to reconnect the wires for the light and clip the wire harness back in. Once that's done, we can grab the top front panel. Reconnect the wires and angle it in towards the top panel. We're going to let the top brackets hook into the top panel and then rotate the front panel into place. Now we're going to secure the bottom of the front panel with the 5 16 inch screws that we removed. With that, we're done. Don't forget to plug the dryer back in or flip the circuit breaker back on. Thanks for watching. Once you've found the faulty part, whether it has been a motor or something else, grab your model number and head over to appliancepartspros.com to order a replacement which should arrive in just a few days. After you get your new part, we'll walk you through the installation with our video guides. Share your repair experience with us by leaving a comment below. And if this video helped you, hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more videos like this. Thanks for your support.